For 45 years, my mother Tracy was separated from her father. It was only two years ago, here in Ballarat, where Tracy finally reunited with Peter. Tracy's story started nine months before the 13th of January 1971, which was conceived by 19-year-old Anne Wells and 21-year-old Peter Clossy. As there was no financial support for single parents at the time, and unmarried mothers were regarded as scandalous, Anne's parents, June and Jim, felt that the best course of action was to give Tracy up for adoption. In 1967, Veronica and Neville Punchin gave birth to a stillborn son named Damien. Damien was to be their second child following their daughter Simone. I had lost a child, uh, my second child, as a stillbirth, a stillborn baby. It was a little boy, uh, it was in the Box Hill Hospital on the 1st of October 1967 and I called him Damien. Coping with it, uh, it was shock and, and some distress of course. Nothing was said, there was no, no explanation of what had gone wrong. When it was feeding time and all the babies would be wheeled to their mothers They'd all be screaming and yelling and crying, wanting to be fed, and I didn't get one. And I, I felt that, you know, everybody else had a, a baby and I didn't, and that was hard. That was hard. After a year had passed, Veronica decided to adopt a child. She went to the Catholic-based adoption agency in Carlton, where she applied for an application. They took note of, of our features and recorded that they visited our home just to check out that it was up to standard and able to cope with the bringing up of a little child. It was a safe place um, and secure place and a pr appropriate place. And of course, at, we hadn't long built this house. It was a little house out in South Blackburn and um, it was certainly it met all the standards required. Were approved. We were given the approval to be adoptive parents, adopting parents, and uh, it was just then a matter of um, wait, wait until some some little girl came along that fitted the mould that they'd seen as appropriate for us. On the 11th of November, 1951, 20 years before Tracy's birth, Peter Clossy's parents, Edward and Joyce, passed away in a horrific car accident. Ada Walsh, mother of Joyce and mother-in-law of Edward, raised Peter from birth with his sister Faye. I think one of my parents was killed instantly and the other one died on the operating table. Uh, I was found in a ditch, but I think I survived okay. Everyone else survived okay. Um, they were coming home from a, an outing, a day out, down in, the, in Gippsland. And I think, um, according to the article, the car skidded and Following Tracy's birth in 1971, Peter was discouraged by June and Jim in marrying Anne. Peter wasn't given any information regarding Tracy, and he didn't even know who had adopted her. Anne, on the other hand, contacted Tracy when Tracy was 10 years old, and was legally able to meet up with her when she was 18. I just thought maybe, well, she, as she gets older, she wants to find me, she can. You know, I, I never thought for one minute that she would be denied any knowledge of my surname, which made it extremely difficult. But like all things, you have to get over things in life and, and you move on. I always had a longing to find my birth father and it was obvious that I wasn't going to get the information from my birth mother or my grandparents. I didn't want to um, upset my birth mother by keep on questioning her all the time. So I took it in my own hands to try to find my birth father myself. James and I decided to go through, go to the State Library and look through old newspapers trying to find a car accident around the time um, that I believed it happened. The other option I tried to do was like ring up the police and ask where could I go, to, did they have any records of accidents and they couldn't help me. As the years passed by, Tracy still hadn't found her father. Now in her 40s, she was losing all hope and began to accept 
that the identity of her father would remain a mystery. That was until Karen, Tracy's best friend, tried out a DNA test for herself. She told Tracy and urged her to do the same. And she said, look, you know, you've got nothing to lose. And she had no, known um, my plight about how long I'd been searching for my father and she knew me really well because we were really good friends since um, year seven. So I did this DNA test and you had to wait a couple of weeks or more and that was quite a nervy time because um, I didn't know if I'd get any information from it or um, it was sort of exciting and then I was scared at the same time what, what will the results be. The results revealed a surprise, a second cousin named Luke Cooper that Tracy had never heard of. She decided to message him to see if he knew anything. And then he messaged me back and he said, I think I know, I think I've got the information that you're looking for. And I couldn't believe it. And he said, here's my phone number. You're welcome to ring me any time. So I rang him on the phone and he said to me, Tracy, I know who your father, I think I know who your father is. He goes, I am a, a cousin to you and I don't know your father personally, but I knew of the story. And he said, I've discussed it with my um, grandmother and they think, um, she thinks that you should know, know about it. So then she said, he said to me, his name's Peter. He gave me his last name and he said he's on Facebook, look him up. So I rang up and he answered the phone. And he said, hello, Peter speaking. And I recall saying to him, hello, this is Tracy. I don't know how to tell you this, but I think I'm your daughter. And there was silence on the other end. And then he said, okay. He said, keep talking. I went on and said a bit more. And then he said, yes, I'm your father. I don't know if I burst into tears or what, but, um, I thought, oh, you know, this is what I've waited all my life for. So I was excited but scared at the same time. I gave him my details where I live and he said um, he would send me photos of relatives and family. You know, to me it's been easy because I, I've never really felt uncomfortable with Tracy or her husband or you kids, you know. And I think the thing is, Tracy and I, we do think pretty similarly about a lot of things and you know I, I admire her strength of character she's a lovely lady she's very warm she's caring she's very forgiving um, and I'm very proud of her. It, it sort of completes the puzzle it's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle with a missing piece that you don't know where it is but you eventually find it and there's the picture.